was with you, set Jesus Christ and him crucified. Second thing, Paul urged strongly his young cohort to remember Jesus Christ. Timothy 2 8 reads, Remember Jesus Christ who raised from the dead. The third thing, Paul declares his intentions to preach Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 1 23 reads, But we preach Christ crucified. There they all are. Know Jesus Christ, remember Jesus Christ, and preach Jesus Christ. To know Jesus Christ is to experience is an experience of a lifetime, his and ours. To remember Jesus Christ is more than to know Christ. It demands the regular ready recollection of the resurrection, one in our own daily life. This includes, but is not limited to the to this weekly meal. To preach Jesus Christ is more than to remember Christ. It is the living proclamation of the one who entered the dominion of the death so that we might be transferred out of the kingdom of darkness. But one of the most fascinating things about these three command commandments is that we can carry out all three at once in eating of this meal. When we eat, we discern the body of Christ. It is here around this table that we know Jesus Christ. When we eat, we so do in remembrance of him. It is here around this table that we remember Jesus Christ. And when we eat, we proclaim that Lord death until he comes. It is here around this table that we preach Jesus Christ. So when we eat this bread, recognizing his body broken for us, we drink this cup, recognizing the new covenant in his blood. And as we do so, we are knowing, remembering, and preaching Jesus Christ. As we pray, uh, raise your hand. Father, hey, we just want to come to you today. Just thank you, Lord. Thank you, David. Well, we have a good crowd. <coughs> How many of you love the Lord? Say amen. amen. How many of you want to go to heaven? Say amen. amen. How many of you want to go to heaven with David? The 17th chapter. How many of you brought your Bibles? Let me see. This is a Bible revival. You know what? We in the America need to go back to the Word of God. Amen. We need to go back to Jesus and His Word and what He said. Return to the old paths, as the Bible says. Some things that are old are very good. Isn't that right? That's right. Amen. And the Word of God is old, but it's up to date and it's good. And we need to go back to that and listen to to what Jesus has to say. Say Jesus. 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 Jehovah is salvation. Is what Jesus means. And America needs Jesus again. Isn't that right? Amen. America needs Jesus again. And the church of Christ. Across America. And around the world. Needs Jesus again. The Bible says in Matthew the 17th chapter. After, and after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringeth them unto a high mountain apart, and was transfigured, or changed, before them. And his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elijah, talking with them. Just think Moses... And Elijah has been in paradise for years and years and years. For some reason, we'll see, God calls Moses and Elijah out of paradise just as Jesus called Lazarus out of paradise. You know, when you die and you go to paradise, you can't come out of paradise. You can't come back unless Jesus calls you. Here, Jesus, God, calls Moses and Elijah out of paradise. Then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. You know, it's good for us to be in the presence of Jesus, isn't it? Amen. It's good for us to be in the presence of the prophets, isn't it? Yeah. It's good for us to be in the presence of the Word of God. Amen. And when we're, in, when we're in the presence of Jesus, or I should say this, when we're preaching and teaching the Word of God, Jesus is here. Isn't that right? It's good for us to be where Jesus is. The Bible says, where two or three are gathered in my name. There is something about that name Jesus. I love Jesus with my whole being. I love His Word. It's good for us to be here. 
that hear the word of God. The Bible says, Peter answered and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt let us make the, here three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Isn't that something? We want to make three tabernacles. But here's a very important point that I don't want you to miss. Moses was a great man, wasn't he? Yeah. Moses represented the what? The law. Elijah represented the prophets. Isn't that right? That's right. Should we build a tabernacle to Moses and to Elijah? While he yet speak, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice out of heaven said, Wouldn't you love to have been there? This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Who said that? The Heavenly Father said that. The God of this universe said that. He looked at Peter, James, and John because he's getting ready to build a fire under Peter, James, and John and they're going to turn the world upside down for Jesus. He's building a fire under them and he said, This is my beloved son. Hear ye him. I want to say tonight, the only one that we ought to listen to in the religious world is the Lord Jesus Christ. Someday I will not
read it. Isn't that right? Some people have never picked up the Word of God. I believe that we ought to take the Word of God off of our shelves. Take Grandma's hair out of it, Grandpa's toenails out of it, pull all the dust out of it, and begin to realize that it's powerful. It is the Word of God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh, who is Jesus Christ, and He dwells or He tabernacles among us. It is Jesus that we need to listen to, not the preachers. You know, I don't, now this is going to, oh, I better take another drink. Because <laughs> in a minute I'm going to get excited. I don't care what the Church of Christ says about it. I care about what heaven says about it. Amen. I care about what happened because the Church of Christ, many of them have changed. Many of them slid off the foundation. Jesus said, Whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him to a wise man which built his house upon the rock, and the rain descended, and flood came, and the winds blew and built upon that house, and it fell, and it, 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 it fell not because it was founded upon the rock. But Jesus said, Whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not, shall be likened to a foolish man that built his house upon the sand, and the rains descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. House after house, church after church is falling, Christian after Christian is falling because we believe everybody's okay. We believe the Buddha's okay. We believe Hare Krishna. We believe the cult's okay as long as they're sincere. Let me tell you what. I don't care what the Church of Christ says about it. Hear ye Him. The Lord Jesus Christ. We need to give back. People, I love America. Red, white, and blue. I told you this morning my dad was a Marine. Fought for many years in World War II, a machine gunner. But I told Dad, I said, listen, I hate to bust your bubble here, but when you die, the heaven streets are not going to be well guarded by the United States Marines. And that, the red, white, and blue is not the colors of heaven according to Revelation. They're not going to be playing the Star Spangled Banner up there. But I love America. And if we don't do something, people, as Christians, I, 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 I wish I had a rope I could swing. <laughs> Those country western stars do it and everybody just, ah, oh, paying attention to it. That's all. Let me tell you. <laughs> we need to, need to listen to Jesus. Isn't that right? Amen. We need to get back to Jesus. Let me tell you, I think we can do it. It's not the Republicans. It's not the Democrats. That's going to save America. It is a certain group of people that's going to save America. It is the Lord's church Amen. that will humble themselves and pray and seek His face. We need to quit bickering and arguing and complaining. And we need to get on our knees and say, God, use me in a mighty way to save America in the church. God can use one person if they have a humble heart and a big mouth. If they don't, God can make him have a big mouth. If God can use a donkey, He can use you. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Exactly. He, he, you know what? He wants to use us, David. God wants to use us. You know what? When we stand up and talk about Jesus, the heaven loves that. Can you imagine God, Jesus on His right hand, the Holy Spirit, angels in heaven? When we talk about Jesus. You know, no wonder the Bible tells us when we pray to God, go into Jesus' name. Because as soon as we mention God, we're coming in the name of Jesus. He sits on the edge of His throne and He says, Come on, come on, I'm a listening now. I'm a listening because you came in the name of Jesus Christ. Hear ye Him. Oh, Jesus is wonderful. Amen. Jesus said, and I want you to follow along real quick. I get to eat after this. <laughs> oh. What did Jesus say? The Bible says, listen to Jesus. Let's turn to John 8, 24. Pray for me. I'm losing my voice. And I don't know why. <laughs> and Jesus is speaking here and He said, I, I, I. That's for emphasis. If you're a good school teacher,
teacher, you emphasize. Right. I say, therefore, unto you, that ye, you. you and I, the apostles, anybody else, ye shall die in your sins. For if ye believe not that I am he, he shall die in your sins. Like I said, I don't care what America says about it. I don't care what denominationalism says about it. If we don't believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, if we don't believe that He is God in the flesh, if we don't believe that He performed those miracles, He proved beyond the shadow of a doubt that He was the Christ, the Son of the living God, when He walked on water. You know, there's a lot of knuckleheads in this religious world. And one guy challenged me, he heard me on television, and he was a he was one of those loud, voiceless speakers. <laughs> Wouldn't hear it all well, was it? Can, can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, sound good. But anyway, his people, they were snake handling people. They're not allowed to handle snakes anymore. Anyway, his people called me because I said, nobody can do any miracles like Jesus did. I believe that. He was like, who? <laughs> you know what? I'll say this slow in case some of my relatives are here. <laughs> if you can perform, now listen, if you can perform one miracle that Jesus performed, you can perform every miracle that Jesus performed. If not, why not? Yeah. Oh, they like to pick them out. Don't they? they like to pick things out. But this guy told me he could walk on water. He could raise the dead. I told him, I said, I can walk on water. You come to Indiana right across from my house. David's been there. There's a reservoir, 290 acre reservoir right across my house. In, in February, it's about, sometimes it gets 20 below zero. And I walk on water. <laughs> we got talking. He said, I can raise the dead. I said, okay, Grayville Church, we're gonna, uh, we'll, we'll pay for the news to come out. You pick the cemetery. And I said, uh, you pick the grave that you want. And I said, you pray. And you pray. And you pray that God will raise the dead as Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. And well, while you're praying that God will raise him from the dead, I'm going to pray that God keeps him there. And we'll see who wins. <laughs> <laughs> it's not about anything I've done, but I know what the Word of God says. Amen. What Jesus said. We need to believe that Jesus changed the water into wine. We need to be, believe that Jesus walked on the water. Peter walked on the water, didn't he? But he took his eyes off of Jesus. That's why he said. Oh, you take your eyes off of the Lord, you're going to crumble. Your home will crumble. Your life will crumble. Keep your eyes upon Jesus. Jesus said we must believe that he is the Son of the living God. Really quick, let's turn to Matthew 10. 32. Listen to what Jesus said. Hear ye him. Well, I'm thinking about Cracker Barrel. Shouldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> While you're turning to that, you know what? I'm concerned about your church, brother. Eve gave Adam fruit. Some brother gave me some apples today when I walked in in a little room. I kind of worry about that. I was hoping they were apples. I didn't think in a brown bag they could be whiskey. You know? <laughs> nah. But Satan works, doesn't he? He doesn't want us to believe Jesus at all. The Bible says in Matthew 10, 32, Whosoever, Jesus said, Therefore shall confess me before men, then will I confess also before my Father, which is in heaven, but whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father, which is in heaven. And I want to say this quickly, but I want you to listen. That it's not the only time we confess Jesus is when we walk down the aisle and say, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Jesus said, and God said, hear ye him. And we need to listen. Jesus said, if you confess me before man, that's every day. That's on the job. That's at the Waffle House. That's at the pig style, whatever that is. No matter where, that's at work. By the way that we act. Isn't it something? 
they cuss and carry on. Do you cuss here or do you curse? It's according to what group I'm with. If you're like me, you just cuss. I don't cuss, but... <laughs> but the thing is, we need to realize that our worship with Jesus and with God is outside. We just come here to express our worship in the Lord's Supper and in singing. We need to confess Jesus out there by the way that we live, by the way we act. We need to be like that old song, holy, holy, holy. Without holiness, it's impossible to see God. We need to get back to that old holy religion. Isn't that right? Amen. We need to be holy like He is holy. And we confess Him by the way that we live. Hear ye Him. Jesus wants us to confess Him. Amen. I tell you what, I appreciate the young people here. And I hear so many good things because they're constantly confessing Christ, not only in the church building, but...